What up, producer friends? Welcome back to Croco Nation. Today, we're going to talk about six tips on how to get a better buildup. I'm going to break them down in segments, right? The first thing we're going to talk about is dynamic change, how to create tension, how to add teasers or foreshadowing, pitch, reverb and delays, automation. And I'm also going to throw in a bonus tip at the end. I had to, you know what I'm saying? All right, let's go ahead and get started. So as usual, I prepared a quick demo. It took me about a half hour to create this. And it's going to be a build up and drop like my usual format. I'm going to go ahead and play it through. And then after that, we're going to break down each of the elements that I was discussing in the intro. So let's go ahead and hear it. <laughs> Alright guys, so the first topic that we're going to talk about are dynamic changes and respect to the low end. So the goal here is to cut out all the low frequencies as we build up to the drop, right? And why do we want to do that? For two things, right? One, we want to create some sort of change or deltas to say, hey, things are moving. And then number two, this is the main one, being that we don't want the drop to be a letdown. Because if you have bass throughout the entire buildup, once the drop starts, it's going to feel like a big letdown, right? Cutting out the low end will give you the illusion that the drop is more powerful. So I'm going to demonstrate that with the respace. So I have like a drone respace space in this buildup. So as you can see here, I drew an automation lane and applied a high pass filter in the EQ8 and I just automated it to the frequency. As you can see here, I drew this. So as you can see here, the low end is being taken out little by little as the buildup leads to the drop. And that's what's going to give the illusion of a bigger drop. All right, guys, so my second point here is to create tension. So there's many ways to create tension, but the one I'm going to dive into is regarding snare rolls or snare buildups. So the one I have here is uh, 1 16th notes throughout, like a typical tech house snare buildup. And it sounds something like this. There's also big room types or a big room style where it just keeps doubling, right? right you just kind of double it up sound ridiculous but uh you know here we are doing tutorials so i did a couple things here right so the first thing is i got rid of some of the low end as the build-up leads to the drop right very similar to how i did that in the bass creating dynamic range and then i also automated the volume right so the volume starts a little lower and then as you build up to the the drop it gets louder right you can hear that very subtle So you hear like some effects going on in the background. I'll explain what that is later, but it's just pretty much a plugin. I'm sure many of you know it. And the smile by Dada Life, which I'm not sponsored by, but uh, that's why it sounds like that. All right, tip or point number three is, uh, I call it a teaser or foreshadowing. And this is something I'm sure you've heard in, in songs before, but it's pretty much introducing some sort of element, whether it's maybe like a, a bass line, but typically it's done with the lead and you don't play the full melody. It's just more of like a teaser, right? Like kind of like, oh, something's coming. So I soloed the lead and it sounds like this. This is what I did for, for this song just as an example so as you can see it wasn't the exact melody or lead but it was just maybe like a note or two right kind of getting that pattern going just engage the listener and letting him know like hey we're foreshadowing that something's going to happen right some some sort of lead is going to be in the song and then one of the last things i added an eqa except instead of a high pass filter i added a low pass filter right on the two here and then i just automated the frequency and as the buildup leads to the drop the filter opens right so there's more high frequencies all right so point number five or tip number five is using reverb and delay in your buildups i'm gonna go ahead and show you two ways and how to do that so let's go ahead and dive into the first one which is more of a manual approach where you're using some sort of synth or uh, you can even use this with the stock ableton plugins but for this lesson i'm gonna show you how i did it using serum so what i did here is i added two macros right one that has delay one that has reverb and the way i utilize them is by increasing the level as the build up gets closer to the drop i did that for reverb as well so the reason that we're doing this is that reverb and delay provide two things so when we add reverb to something we have the illusion that it's getting pushed to the back instead of being in front of the mix and then we'll use delay to maybe create some width so let's play i soloed it so we can hear it and you'll see how these knobs here increase as the buildup goes on <laughs> Here, everything kind of feels like it's getting pushed to the back. Or 
more, you can just add endless smile plugin by Dada Live and add some efficiency to your workflow. So what you can do here is just add an automation lane to the master, for example, and it'll give you that washout effect that you've been hearing, which is uh, this. <laughs> It's an extreme example so you guys can hear it. But there's different presets here you can use, right? Like for example, this one, Fist in the Air, has a lot of reverb in it. So there's another efficient way to get that sound. I just noticed that my camera died. How wonderful. So uh, tip number six is pretty self-explanatory. It's just automation, right? We've been using it throughout the entire video. And so that's going to be a key component in creating deltas in your track and creating those dynamics, that tension. So that way when the drop hits, it hits hard. That one's pretty easy, but just for the beginners out there, let's say you want to create an automation lane. The way I like to do it is, uh, let's say we're going to click on this white noise here. We're going to right click on the on and off button, show automation. For example, this one is just gonna be on and off. So if you wanna turn it off, you leave it there and it turns it off, you want it on, you put it there, right? Off, on. So you can do that with intensity, right? The intensity for like example, the uh, data life, or you can do it on the reverb level, EQ for the filters and so forth. And all right guys, as promised, I have my last and final bonus tip. So the last and final bonus tip is regarding pre-drops. Pretty much a pre-drop is just the melody by itself before the, the drop kicks in, right? The way I have it done here is with the vocal, but it can be melodies too, like a synth, right? Some sort of lead. So let's go ahead and hear it just to pinpoint that out. <laughs> So as you can see, I added that vocal and it's just kind of like a pause in between and then you have that sort of lead. This is done to kind of remove the predictability of the drop, but uh, let's be honest here, a lot of producers and DJs are doing that now. So, you know, it just depends on, on what you're looking for and your, your track. But I think this is another great way to add some sort of spice to your buildup. All right, guys, I hope you found that useful. If you did find it helpful, please consider following us. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, go over to crocoanation.com. I do a free pack with serum presets and samples on the link down below. So I'll go ahead and get your hands on those. And if you have any other additional tips or methods please feel free to share down below as we're all a community and we all like to add value all right guys have a good one